everyone welcome to another episode of strength for today we're kicking off another week and once again i'm excited about what the lord has put on my heart to share with you today and so let's just dive right in this week and i want to start off this week a little bit different and just share just a personal experience that i had and it's going to dive in uh, and tie in really well to uh, ephesians chapter one that we're going to look at today in john chapter one really what grace uh, is and what role grace has in our own transformation. Last week, we talked a lot about the process of transformation and kind of in the context of Paul's life. And so I'm going to just start off by sharing an example in my life of how God interacted with me. And it's going to tie into the life of Paul. And hopefully you can see yourself in some of these stories and testimonies that I share. And so this uh, encounter that I had was several years ago when my family and I went up to a uh, cabin together, uh, my parents and my two brothers, and we just rented it for a week. And we were there a couple days and we ended up getting uh, a place that had a kayak and was right on the lake. And so our backyard was uh, right to Lake Michigan. And the first couple of days, the water was rough and couldn't do a whole lot of kayaking. And that's one of my favorite things to do personally is that it's very relaxing to me. And I love being out on the lake. And so the, about a third night in after dinner, we uh, went outside and I could just see that the water was so calm and so clear. And at this point uh, uh, on the trip, I had got up early in the morning and uh, worked out and then usually would go run along the shore. Uh, and when I'd come back, I would just spend my quiet time and devotion uh, in Ephesians. And that's what we're going to dive into today in Ephesians 1. But this particular night, uh, I got the kayak out and just started to wade out. And I just kind of made a commitment to myself that I was going to go out in about as far as I could. And so probably for about 45 minutes to an hour, I just kind of set out and went out on Lake Michigan. And uh, once I got out far enough, I turned the kayak around and I just looked down to the shore and I could just see my kids playing faintly uh, in the yard with my brother's kids. And, you know, they were just kind of wrapping things up for the night and the sun was setting. And so I just kind of turned the kayak back around and I just looked out and I put my feet on the outside of the kayak and was just kind of uh, dangling them in the water. And this is just a memory that a lot of times I come back to in appreciation. You've heard me talk a lot about appreciation and the power that it has in our lives and really how God can even interact with us through these memories and he can build upon them as we perceive his presence of where he was at in these memories and uh, what he wants to share with us. And so I'm out there that night and I'm just kind of taking it all in. And I just was laying there um, kind of synchronizing the, the rhythm of the water underneath and just the, the bobbing of the kayak as I was floating out there. And I can remember looking over the side of the kayak down into the water and it was just clear and I could see several feet down, um, you know, into the lake and just taking all this in as I was sitting there, God began to speak to me because I had been reading in Ephesians one through four uh, in the mornings up to this point and God just started to kind of give me a picture or an image and that's one of the ways that I connect with the Lord is I've started to notice and become aware that a lot of times the images that we think maybe randomly come into our mind are actually from the Lord. And I just had this image of God's grace uh, all around me. And I just saw that the water of Lake Michigan represented God's grace. And he just started ministering in my heart and in my spirit about how grace was so abundant in the life of Paul and for so many of the disciples. And really, that's the key foundation that we build our lives upon in Christ in the new covenant is that it's grace that upholds us. It's grace that's our foundation um, in how Christ has made us clean. He's purified us. And it's his grace that really empowers us to live into all that he has for us. And God just began to minister 
uh, into my heart and said, my grace surrounds you, look around you. And as I looked around and I looked out, you know, you could just see where the sky met the water and that's all you could see. And the Lord just started speaking to my heart saying that my grace upholds you. There's nowhere that you can go that's outside of my grace and my love. And, you know, there's no bottom. Uh, there's no bottom. There's a, there's a bottom to this lake, but there's no bottom to my love and my grace. And you just can't get out of it. You can't escape it. And so that night, I remember just going back into the shore and before I went to bed, I was just thinking about that being out there that night and what it meant. And I woke up the next morning and I just began to reflect again uh, on the grace. And that morning, I can remember just noticing the waves crashing over the shore um, as the tide was coming in. And as it went out, kind of synchronizing my heart to that rhythm and God just reminding me that his grace washes over us every morning. And reminded of that psalm where it says his mercies are made new every morning. And little did I know that this image and this time and this memory uh, would be so profound because over the last five years of my life, um, this has turned out to be very significant. And over the last couple of weeks and months, God began to expand that encounter that I had with him on Lake Michigan. And through other encounters through prayer, God has started to tie the meaning of these things together for me. And I'm going to share a little bit more on Friday of this week about how this significant piece out at Lake Michigan was a huge part of my healing process. And I love how the Lord works in our hearts and in our lives sometimes is that he weaves these encounters in such a beautiful and profound way. And what I didn't know at that time was uh, what was ahead for me. And this happened about a, a, maybe a year or so before uh, one of the hardest times in journey, uh, part of my journey, um, you know, that I was about to engage on. And little did I know that what God spoke into my heart and began to show me uh, would be the profound nature of what I was getting ready to walk into for the next five years and how grace would really be the key foundation and cornerstone that would uphold um, everything that I was and the, the battle that I was about to face. And I just now, and you'll see on Friday, I began to see and understand the depth and the power that grace has to sustain us in very difficult and trying situations. And God's done such a beautiful job of ministering and pulling these different things together. And I always say that God often works in uh, pictures and he gives us a part of something and he doesn't just give us it all up front. Because like I shared a few weeks ago in the life of Peter, had Peter known all the things that he was gonna come up against in his life, he probably wouldn't have engaged in the journey. And that was true in my life. And I'm sure that it's probably been true in your life, knowing if you knew some of the hardships that you were going to have to walk through, would you have gone through them? And you wouldn't be the person that you are today. And so we're going to jump into Ephesians chapter one here. And I was just want to kind of take some time to teach through some verses today. And we're going to see that grace was such a huge foundation for Paul and everything that he was and had come out of and now had the opportunity ahead to bring the good news because of what Jesus had done in the transformation that Jesus has made in his own personal life. So let's dive in. And I want to kind of teach and give some insight around some of these incredible statements. And I'm going to read from the Passion again, because I love how it captures it here. In verse two of chapter one of Ephesians, he says, I'm writing this letter to all the devoted believers who have been made holy by being one with Jesus, the anointed one. And I want to encourage you today that if you have put your faith in Christ, you are one with him. And I believe that's a work he's doing in the earth today. And right now in this hour is teaching us what it means to be one with him, because in order to be one, there's got to be in a uh, we have to live from an undivided heart and an undivided mind. And for so many of us, 
our hearts have been captured or allured by other things. And God is really pulling all these things uh, apart from him to the surface and our hearts in order to heal them. So he says, see yourself as one with him. And he says, may God himself, the heavenly father of our Lord Jesus Christ, release grace over you and impart total well-being into your life. And I love that phrase. May he impart grace and release it into your heart. And I just want to maybe hit the pause button. I encourage you to hit the pause button and just how would that feel to receive grace upon grace in your heart? I spend a lot of time just reflecting on that. And grace has this incredible uh, ability to empower us and to expand us. And so maybe just focus and meditate on that, of what it's like to have grace released. And then he goes on to say, he says, every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm has already been lavished upon us as a love gift from our wonderful heavenly father, the father of our Lord Jesus. So every gift of love has been lavished upon you as a son or a daughter of the king. That's incredible news. And I want you to be encouraged by that. And then he says, all because he sees us wrapped into Christ. This is why we celebrate him with all of our hearts. I love that phrase of celebrating him with all of our hearts. That's appreciation and gratitude and thanksgiving and I recently heard it said that praise and thanksgiving is the gateway into his presence. And when you would spend time intentionally reflecting and maybe making a journal of these memories, that's what this Lake Michigan experience provided for me. And as I've gone back to it several times, the Lord has met me in it and he's began to minister upon it, which you're going to see on Friday, how the Lord's unfolded that experience uh, even though it happened five years ago, uh, it still resonates very strongly in my heart. And he still continues to do things around that experience in terms of my healing and in terms of strengthening me today. Then he goes on to say, and he chose us to be his very own, joining us to himself, even before he laid the foundation of the universe. He chose you. You are wrapped in Christ, and the way the Father saw his son Jesus is now the way he sees you. If that's not good news, then I don't know what is, because often the enemy tells us everything that we're not, and that we're not worthy of the Father's attention and adoration, um, and he tries to pull us out of the Father's sight, and the Father sees us for who we are, and he validates where you're at today. And he's chosen you because of his great love. And it says, so that we would be seen as holy in his eyes. The father so many times said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. And he says that about your life. And he says it over your life. He sees you as holy. That's a big part of what it means to be made new and to live into the newness in the new creation. Paul didn't define himself by who he used to be. Grace empowered him to see himself in the moment. This is now who I am. This is who I'm becoming. And he trusted the Lord at a deeper level. And then he goes on to say, he ordained us so that we would be seen as holy in his eyes with an unstained innocence. For it was always in his perfect plan to adopt us as his delightful children through our union with Jesus, the anointed one, so that his tremendous love that cascades over us would glorify his grace. And I love that language of God's love just cascading over us like a waterfall. And his love pouring over us glorifies the Father. And that's the role of the Holy Spirit is to bring us before Jesus face to face. And as we're face to face with Jesus, Jesus begins to speak into our heart who we are and what he loves about us. And it brings glory to the Father because when we're living from our identity, we're representing the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in their true nature. And that's what our Christian walk in maturity is really about. And he says, for the same love he has for his beloved one, Jesus, he has for us. And this is an unfolding plan that brings him great pleasure. Your life is God's unfolding plan 
pointing and glorifying God himself. And he says that you are the beloved one. Just as he saw Jesus, that's the way he sees you. That's the way he thinks about you. That's the way he speaks about you in the world and to those around you as well. Verse seven says that since we are now joined to Christ, we have been given the treasure of redemption by his blood, the total cancellation of our sins, all because of the cascading riches of his grace, the treasures of redemption. I want you to just spend some time in that and just ask the Holy Spirit, what are the treasures of redemption? There are so many things that capture our attention today. But as we learn to focus on the things of heaven, like Paul encouraged us in Colossians 3, as you set your habit, as you set your mind and build habits on thinking from heaven, you begin to see that there are treasures through the redemption, God's redeeming work over your heart. And it unfolds wisdom, it unlocks love, it unlocks the ability to serve other people in the gifts of the spirit, the fruit of the spirit, as our intimacy with him grows. And then it says, this superabundant grace is already powerfully working in us. His superabundant grace working in you already. And it says, since it's working in us, it releases within us all forms of wisdom and practical understanding. And through the revelation of the anointed one, he unveiled his secret desires to us the hidden mystery of his long range plan, which he has delighted to implement from the very beginning of time. That is such incredible news. And it sounds just like who I see God to be in scripture. And it through the revelation and the knowledge of knowing Jesus personally, relationally, it says that it unlocks his secret desires towards us, his long range plan for our life, why several episodes when I said what it's like to be in the zone as an athlete or maybe as a musician, what it feels like to have wisdom unlocked in you is that there's a clarity that God's purpose begins to get really narrow and focused in these times where grace is being poured out in abundance and made available to us because God gives grace to us up front. He doesn't withhold it when we turn our lives to him and when we surrender our hearts to him, he doesn't just say, okay, now you've got to work into receiving my grace. No, he gives it all up front and he makes it available. And if we take it and hold it, grace unlocks things in us like identity and the ability to, to assess and discern the world around us, to have strategies and solutions that the world desperately needs in this hour. So I just pray that Jesus himself would meet you in ways that uh, when you think of grace, you think of Jesus. And I want to turn our attentions in the, in, in the last few minutes here to John chapter one. I love the gospel of John. I love chapter one because it really reveals who Jesus was. And it even says that he was full of grace and truth. So I want to flip right now to John chapter one, and I want to read a few verses that describe the person of Jesus and how he was full of grace. John one chapter four, and it says life came into being because of him. When, when God spoke things into existence back in Genesis, guys, we've got to understand that our Genesis, our origin starts back when God spoke the world into existence. And even before the world existed, you were the dream in his heart. He knew the plans that he had for you even before he made Adam and formed Eve. That's an incredible thought. But it said life came into being because of him. For his life is light for all humanity. Light is a theme of the gospel of John light coming into our darkness. And it says in this living, ex living expression is the light that bursts through gloom. And I just want you to focus on that image, the light bursting forth in gloom. Maybe your life feels like it has a lot of gloom. And I'm asking, Lord, would you just be the light that bursts forth? God, may your grace be manifest and known in our hearts to experience it in our gloom 
uh, would be penetrated by your incredible light. And I'm going to skip down to verse 12, and it says, but those who embraced him, talking about embracing Jesus, took hold of his name, were given authority to become the children of God. I want to speak to your heart today that you are a child of God if you put your faith in the one true name that is above every name, that you've been given the authority and the right to become the son or the daughter that God has created you to be. Embrace him. Let him embrace you because that's his greatest desire is to be in relationship with you. And in verse 14, it says, and so the living expression became a man and lived among us. And we gazed upon the splendor of his glory. I pray that we could do that right now in this moment, that you would just gaze into the splendor of his beauty and that he'd give you a revelation of who he is. And it says the glory of the one and only who came from the father overflowing with tender mercy and truth. I love that phrase in the passion of tender mercy and truth. That's how he's represented in the Amplify or the Passion Translation. And I want to read that same verse from the Amplified Version because I love how the Amplified Version says it as well. Here in the Amplified, verse 14, it says, And the word Christ became flesh and lived among us. It's an incredible thought by itself that he lived among us. And we actually saw his glory, glory as belongs to the one and only begotten son of the father. Glory alone belongs to Jesus because he represents the father. And it says the son who is truly unique, the only one of his kind, who is full of grace and truth, absolutely free of deception. I want you to hear that because Experiencing his grace and receiving his grace requires a trust and the ability to form a secure attachment with the Father. And for many of us, we've been wounded and will continue to get wounded by human beings. But I love this. It says that Jesus is one of a kind, full of grace and full of truth. Every encounter that you read in scripture that had an encounter with Jesus came away changed forever. Just like we've been talking about Paul, Stephen before he was martyred, Peter, all the disciples that immediately dropped everything and followed him because he was a person of grace and truth. And if we become grace and truth because Jesus is grace and truth, and it says he continued to grow in grace and truth, he was dependent on what he saw and heard from heaven. And if we model that kind of a lifestyle, we become so full of his grace and truth that the world can't press in and rob us of our strength because no matter what comes, we can stand strong, we're stable, and we're not shaken because we have a God and a King who's never shaken. So be encouraged by these words today. And what you saw in John 1, I believe, is what was represented and happening in the heart of Paul on that road to Damascus when he was blinded and light came in as the scales fell. That can be your same experience because he has experiences, he has a life, and he has a plan. He's got an identity that he's just waiting to release in your life and over your heart. Because the greatest joy he sees and experiences in this world is you walking in the fullness of your identity, walking in the fullness of the light where darkness may not, where may be present in your heart, in your mind, in your seeing, in your speaking. Guys, the the wonderful light. Peter said it wonderfully. He said, now I'm walking into marvelous light. So God, as we close this episode, I'm just praying that we would walk in your light, that your light would expose the darkness in us and that we'd be able to walk and step into the fullness of grace that you've made available in your son, Jesus. May you be empowered today through his grace. May you feel his peace of his presence and may you be filled with joy as he's glad to be with you today. Join me Wednesday where we'll take a look at another one of Paul's incredible power-packed prayers 
uh, that he prayed for all of his churches. But in, for me and you today, from Ephesians 1 and 3, you won't want to miss it. Join me Wednesday. I'll see you then. God bless and God's strength to you today.